Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'll be doing a complete review of the Westinghouse 12500 watt generator. In this video I will cover all its features and everything you should know about it. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. This is the box it comes in, and when you open it up, the first thing you'll find are all the paperwork, including a user manual, which is quite detailed and covers everything you need to know. A maintenance guide, a start guide, the warranty, and a list of replacement parts with part numbers in case something breaks, along with other useful papers. Next, there's a box containing all the generator's accessories. And finally, there is the generator itself. It's a bit heavy, but I managed to get it out by tilting the box on its side and pulling the generator out, which made the process easier. In the box we just took out, you'll find the wheels, which may look like plastic, but are actually made from rubber making it much smoother to move the generator. Then there's the propane hose for connecting to the propane tank and I'll show you how to use that later. The kit also includes a bottle of four stroke oil, which we need to add before using the generator. Since the generator comes with a battery for automatic electric start, it also includes a battery charger. You'll only need this if the generator sits unused for a long time and the battery drains. Additionally, there are some maintenance tools, a funnel for adding oil, the two base supports that stabilize the generator on the ground, and the screws to assemble everything. So everything you need is included in the kit. Installing the wheels is really simple. On one side, you'll find a hole where the wheels fit. You just need to place a washer between the wheel and the generator, and then secure it with this clip. On the other side, there are two holes for the base. Insert two screws and make sure everything is tightened securely. Then repeat the same steps on the other side. Now that the wheels are installed, there's a handle on the side that pulls out like this, making it easy to move the generator. This generator comes packed with impressive features. It can run on both gasoline and propane, which adds great convenience and flexibility. When running on gasoline, it produces 9,500 running watts, with a peak of 12,500 watts, while on propane it delivers 8,500 running watts and 11,200 peak watts. Although the power output is slightly lower on propane, it's still more than enough to run essential household appliances, including the air conditioning system. The design of this generator is practical and built for durability. It's sturdy and well constructed, making it ideal for both home backup use and outdoor activities. It measures around 27 inches in length, 20.5 inches in width, and 26 inches in height. On top of the generator, there's a gas tank that holds up to 6.6 .6 gallons, which is enough to run the generator for up to 12 hours at 25% load on gasoline. There's also a fuel gauge that shows how much gas is left, with the red indicator for the levels. And on the front, you'll find a small set of instructions to help you quickly get it up and running. On the right side of the generator, you'll find the alternator and the exhaust. It's important to keep this side clear and not place anything near it, as this is where the hot exhaust gases are released. On the back of it, there's the chug, which helps the engine start by controlling the air and fuel mixture. This model has an automatic chug, so it adjusts itself when you start the generator, making it easy to use. You can also use it manual, but you won't need to worry about that because the automatic function does everything. On the left side, the first thing that caught my attention is the huge 457 cubic centimeters motor, which is the heart of this generator. Right next to it, you'll find the air filter, which is really easy to change. You'll just need to clean it regularly, especially if you're using the generator in dusty or dirty environments. There's also the gasoline filter, which is just as easy to replace. These filters generally last a long time, here you'll also find the gasoline shutoff valve, and in this section there's also the key fob for remotely starting the generator, and for manual use there's a pull start handle in case you ever need to start it manually. On the front you'll find all the important components. At the bottom is the battery, which comes disconnected, so I'll go ahead and connect it. This battery is used for starting the engine, and when the generator is running it recharges automatically. However, if you leave the generator unused for a long time and the battery drains, you can either use the battery charger to recharge it 
or start the generator manually using the pull start handle. On the front panel, you'll find a switch to toggle between gas and propane for fuel selection. Right next to it is the power button, which lets you start or stop the generator automatically. Below that is the battery indicator, showing you if the battery has power. And there's also a switch to control the battery's power, allowing you to turn it on or off as needed. Underneath, you'll see the smart switch ready port. This is where you can connect the generator to a transfer switch. A transfer switch allows the generator to automatically provide power to your home when the main power goes out, making it ideal for home backup use. There's also a meter that displays key information like voltage, power output, and other important details. Above that is the circuit breaker, which cuts off all power if something goes wrong to protect the generator and your appliances. Next, you'll see a charging port for the battery, and here's a neutral connection that's grounded to the chassis for added safety. Regarding the ports and connections, you'll find four 120 volt power outlets, grouped into two sections. Each section can handle up to 20 amps, which is great for powering standard household appliances or tools. Then there's the 30 amp outlet, which is typically used for connecting the generator to a transfer switch or for powering larger equipment. Finally, there's the 50 amp outlet, which is designed for powering things like RVs, large appliances, or even multiple household circuits when using a transfer switch. This port can deliver more power than the standard outlets, making it perfect for high demand applications. Each of these sections has its own breaker to ensure safety. If something goes wrong or there's an overload. At the bottom, there's a port for hooking up the propane and the spot where the motor oil goes. It's really important to add oil before using the generator because running it without oil could cause severe damage to the motor or even make it seize up. To add the oil, first, open the oil cap. If you see a small amount of oil inside, this is normal because the motor is tested at the factory and they remove most of the oil before shipping. We will use the funnel and the oil that's provided in the kit. The included oil is standard, but if you plan to use the generator in extreme conditions such as very cold temperatures, you should consider using a different type of oil suited for that environment. Once the oil is added, you can check the oil level by removing and replacing the yellow cap. If everything looks good, we are ready to move forward and start using the generator. Now we can add the gasoline, which should be unleaded with an octane rating of 87 or higher. Once that's done, it's time to start the generator. You can start it in three different ways, whether you're using propane or gasoline. The first way is by using the provided key fob. To do this, open the gas valve. Ensure the switch is in the gas position. Turn on the circuit breaker and the battery switch, and then simply press the start button. If it doesn't start right away, it will automatically try again. To stop it, press the other button. The second way is by pressing the start button directly on the generator, following the same steps as before. Finally, the third option is manual start, using the pull start handle. This requires a bit more strength due to the larger motor, but it's a good backup option if the other methods don't work. Using the generator with propane is simple. If you are starting from scratch, make sure the gas valve is turned off. If you are switching from gas to propane, I recommend closing the gas valve and letting the generator run until it shuts off, just to ensure there's no gas left in the lines. After that, connect the propane hose to both the tank and the generator. You can use a leak detector to make sure there is no leakage at the connections. Once everything is secure, switch the fuel setting to propane, turn on the circuit breaker and switch on the battery. You can now start the generator. When it comes to choosing between propane and gas, I usually prefer propane for a few reasons. First, propane is easier to store long term because it doesn't go bad like gasoline does, which can degrade if it sits too long. 
Propane also burns cleaner, which means less buildup in the engine and ultimately less maintenance. Plus, I find it more convenient to use propane tanks. You can quickly swap them out and they're easy to refill. The noise level for this generator is around 90 decibels when running on propane and 92 decibels when running on gasoline, which means the noise is pretty much the same with both fuels. It's important to note that 90 decibels is fairly loud, similar to the sound of a lawn mower, so you will definitely hear it running. One important thing is to place the generator at least 25 feet away from your home to avoid carbon monoxide buildup. If you're going to store the generator for a long time and there's still gas left in the tank, I recommend running the generator until it consumes all the gas. This is important because gasoline can go stale, which may lead to issues like clogged fuel lines or carburetor problems. I tried looking for a way to siphon the gas out, but couldn't find any method. Instead, I closed the gas valve and let the generator run until it shut off. Then, I disconnected the fuel line from the filter and slowly drained the rest by opening the valve. It was a slow process and I'm sure there's a more efficient way to do it, but I managed to get the gas out that way. Overall, this generator offers a great balance of power and convenience, whether you're using gasoline or propane. It's packed with useful features like automatic start, dual fuel capability and plenty of power outlets, making it perfect for home backup or even outdoor use. The setup process is straightforward and is built to last with minimal maintenance. While it is a bit on the louder side and heavy, the ease of movement and multiple starting options make up for it. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Your support means a lot and it helps me keep creating content.